What are your thoughts on the immigration problem that we're suffering today? It's an enormous problem. Uh, it is complex, as we all know. It starts with border security. We do not have adequate border security. We have not devoted adequate resources to border security. One of the reasons is because this Congress uh, and Congresses before it uh, have not devoted enough attention to the issue of immigration. Uh, they've not devoted enough funding to it. We spend an awful lot on entitlements, and it's getting to be, as we all know more and more, this Congress is threatening to expand entitlements dramatically. I do not believe that we should expand entitlements. I think we have to direct more resources toward border security and indeed toward coordination of law enforcement uh, locally and federally so that we can enforce the laws that we already have on the books that should go a long way toward resolving at least some of the bad problems. As a follow-up, what do you do with the illegal immigrants that are here right now working and have families that have right. instead of men? Right, right, absolutely. Um, I think that the issue is, the issues involved with deportation are so complex that it is impractical to think that we can deport 15 million illegal immigrants. I think we have to look very carefully at the issue of whether or not anchor babies should be made citizens of the United States. Uh, I'm not sure that it's uh, wise to make uh, a baby who is born to parents who are here illegally uh, an American citizen, although that would be a profound change. Uh, I myself am the daughter of an immigrant, uh, although a legal immigrant. <laughs> Uh, so first generation on its side, uh, on my mother's side. Uh, but I think that if a path, it's been called many things, as we all know, uh, euphemisms or otherwise, but if there is some sort of path to legality, it should involve, uh, number one, it should be limited uh, to one time only. Uh, it should involve a price to be paid. Uh, and I think the details are going to have to be worked out among uh, probably among individual states, uh, as well as uh, in coordination with the federal government. You know, I, I, the ideal solution is never to reward an illegal uh, entry into this country. Uh, I, I am fully sympathetic to that. I think it probably would be very difficult to resolve it on the Yes, sir? What's your position on unfunded mandates from the federal government on down? They're wrong. <laughs> well, you know, President Reagan said there aren't easy answers, but there are simple answers, uh -huh. and that's one of them. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, Zanine Morelli with Project 21. I want to know what your position is on cap and trade. That's the next agenda item on uh, the Obama administration. Yes, did, did I see you on TV? <laughs> <laughs> incentivize the development of uh, clean energy technologies, which I don't think are a bad thing. I think they're a good thing. I think we should try to preserve our resources. I think it's good to shrink our carbon footprint, so I'm not going to uh, advocate that you know, we should use up every natural resource as fast as possible, but cap and trade politicizes the process, makes the cost to American enterprise, American citizens, punitive will compromise us versus the rest of the world, uh, and it is the wrong way to go. Uh, we need to provide tax incentives to the free market. Uh, we need to allow the free market, from the regulatory standpoint, to do the things that it needs to do to develop energy resources uh, in an innovative way. And I'm sure we can do it. That's the way this country has always done it. And just a simple yes, follow-up, um, with the climate gate going on, the email gate with yes. the scientists, uh, what is your position in terms of man-made global warming? Right. Um, clearly, there is debate among the scientists. It's not, I don't, I don't think the case has been made ironclad uh, for either side yet, if you will. Uh, I'm willing to err. I will 
again, I mean, I, I, I'm willing to err on the side that man has a contribution to that. I, I'm not convinced that we don't. But clearly, it is very disturbing when an agenda is followed uh, and it affects the way in which science is presented. I'm a scientist. I'm a physician. I have a background in the sciences. Uh, that should be the most objective of fields. And evidence, and it happens in medicine too, evidence that is contrary to the hypothesis has to be dealt with, has to be accounted for. So that, is, uh, that was a, a very disturbing uh, development. Um, the Wall Street Journal had a very good supplement about um, climate gate and about general issues revolving around global warming. Uh, and I think it came to a good rational conclusion, which was that even in the face of, of climate gate, which was very disappointing, um, it's probably wise for all of us to think about how we can, again, how we can control what we expel into our atmosphere so that we do have clean water and clean land and clean air to pass on again to the generations that follow us. But Captain Drake, yes ma'am. Uh, I'm a little unclear about your answer. Um, maybe I didn't understand it. Do you fall down, do you, fall, do you fall on the side that, uh, uh, well, first of all, that they, we have a problem. Do you believe we have a problem with global warming? Let me just make it simple. Right. Um, you know what? I, I like, the evidence doesn't, well, you know, I'm, the evidence doesn't specifically point to a problem that we can identify and say, this is due to global warming. It's a predictive thing. So it's a matter of saying, if current trends continue, this is what will happen. At this point, do you believe that we have a problem with global warming? And with the evidence that, that we have and the evidence that's been withdrawn? Right. I don't think the case has been made ironclad that right at this moment in time that we are experiencing something very different from other cyclical changes in the past. I don't think it's unreasonable to try to draw trends, uh, but I, the idea is that, you know, if we take these sorts of predictions seriously, is it reasonable, again, in a free market way, is it reasonable to think about developing sources of energy that don't burn up as much of the resources that we have under the ground uh, or on the ground? And I think that's a reasonable stand to take. So the specific damage right now, no, but could we be facing damage? I'm willing to uh, entertain the thought that we might be. Again, I don't want to be punitive to our economy, but yes, ma'am. Just to interrupt you. One question. One question. Sure. And then, and then we're going to let you sit down. I know there are folks over here who wanted to ask, and I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Doctor. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. You know, in your position on gun control, and would you kindly expand on why you feel one way or the other? Sure. I think that the Second Amendment is unequivocal. Uh, I do not favor punishing owners of guns, legal gun owners, for what criminals do with guns. Uh, so I take a very careful view about any measures that would purport to burden further those who own guns legally. Okay, then you guys, you really, because we have two more people and... I know, I understand. I'll stick around. Can you make an honest commitment that if you are elected that you will not be swayed by any political interests? I will certainly uh, tell you that you will, you will know my heart. Uh, I believe firmly in transparency and accountability, and I think that's what's lacking most, uh, Diane, in this, uh, in this government, uh, as we discussed earlier. Uh, so I think it's very, very important to know exactly what goes into someone's thoughts when he or she is a legislator voting on legislation. And you deserve all <laughs>